exactly but another great pop song solo and um, you'll instantly recognize written and performed by a man that you probably won't <laughs> When it comes to rock and roll, you think of the electric guitar. You don't immediately think of the mandolin. Despite looking like it's jumped straight out of the Middle Ages, this little instrument will play a key role in the success of one of the best loved records of all time. Rod Stewart had been on the music scene from the late 60s, but by the time his third solo album was released, he was still relatively unknown. Then, in 1971, with the success of just one single, he was catapulted from cult singer to international superstar. Maggie May encapsulated Rod's new sound, a mixture of rock, country, blues and folk. But with no real obvious hook, or chorus. One of its truly distinctive elements was its joyful mandolin solo. The record made Rod Stewart a household name, but the mandolin player's contribution, well, that remained a little more anonymous. Even in the album's sleeve notes, Rod put, his name slips my mind. In actual fact, that famous solo was played by Ray Jackson, who at the time was a member of the folk rock band Lindisfarne. Ray, the mandolin, Rod Stewart, Maggie May and you, how come? There was about three, three or four minutes at the end of the song which had nothing in it at all. It was just a repeat. So he said, can you make something up um, on the end? So I said, well, I'll have a go, yeah. Um, and I played this piece is, oh yeah, that's great, uh, we like that. Um, so, so what you're saying is they just invited you in, because you make it sound as though it was really blasé, you just walked in, you did this thing and you walked out again, surely that wasn't it. Weren't you giving notes or...? No, not a thing. Maggie May was initially selected to be the B-side of the single Reason to Believe. However, in Ohio, America, one DJ decided to flip the single and play the B-side. Maggie May caught on in the US and Britain quickly followed. It was a monster hit, so I take it you're able to buy all the drinks down a pub now, yeah? Um, no. When you walk away from the session, you get you get your cash in your hand, you get the uh, musician's union fee, and How much uh, was that? 15 pounds at a time. To add insult to injury, when the record was performed on top of the pops, Rod Stewart asked his DJ friend John Peel to mime the mandolin part. And that is the performance that is that is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody thinks that John Peel did it, don't they? Yeah, that's right. How did you feel about that? Well, I was I was a bit disappointed, obviously. Get but away! You were stronger than disappointed. No, I was I was a bit bit disappointed. Is disappointed the right word? Yes, <laughs> I'll use that word. <laughs> Maggie May hit number one in Britain and America. No one had expected it to do as well as it did. When you look back after 40 years and people all over the world have fallen in love with it, I mean, how does that make you feel? It's quite strange. It still takes you, you know, knocks you sideways occasionally when, when you hear it um, after all these years.